the Javelin. Long before archers and cavalry ruled the battlefields of the world, the Javelin was a true force to be reckoned with. Ultimately just a pointy stick thrown by a warrior, this vicious throwing spear was soon adapted to mounted cavalry attacks, and the devastating effect was felt throughout the ancient world. My own personal love affair for javelins has been well documented. Their versatility, tactical availability, and pure killing power lend themselves willingly to a wide variety of battlefield uses, but for most players they are still seen as a complementary part of battle. Still, on Tactical Enlightenment we are going to engage in a new and ambitious endeavor. Armies comprised entirely and only of javelin throwing units. No boring start to finish campaign here, trudging through the tournaments. We'll start with a solid army of 100 javelin throwing warriors, and through pillage, recruitment, and adventure, we'll seek to obtain a large army of these vicious Spartans. As we vanquish foes across the land of Calradia, we'll see harder and more unique challenges as our army seeks out foes in a wide variety of terrain, scenarios, and circumstances.
All right, friends, welcome back again to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. This YouTube channel is dedicated to all things Banner Lord related, but especially advanced battlefield command and tactics. And we are starting a new series. I know you guys are not shocked, uh, but this one is going to be a bit of a teaser trailer here. This is not going to be something that's imminent, uh, but this is something that I'm going to be doing later this fall or winter. Uh, we are going to do not an infantry only challenge. We are going to do a javelin only challenge. Uh, I may allow throwing axes, but the primary army will consist of guys with javelins. As you can see, Zuvan is appropriately role playing with his jeweled battle crown. Uh, I wish I had a lot more of these helmets. I think I only found one or two in my entire campaign. Uh, and as you can see, most of our army is decked out in sort of a Spartan slash uh, uh, Roman gold here. We've got a little bit of role playing going on. Now notice this. Some of our companions are highly skilled, but she has no throwing skills, zero. Uh, so we've loaded her up with javelins. Uh, she's got an axe. She's got some athleticism. But look at Gweth. She is zero right now. What that means is she's going to level incredibly in this series, right? She might be uh, two or three, well, not 300, but two or 250 uh, throwing by the end of this, this series here. Uh, we've appropriately gathered a few companions here that are brand new. Some of these guys are literally right out of the tavern. Uh, and every single person in the army has been tricked out for this javelin series. Now we have a relatively small army to start, but our army is going to grow. We have a couple cities here that we're starting with and a couple castles and a little pile of gold. Uh, but that none of that's really going to matter. This series is going to be all about tactics. We are going to be uh, kicking the hornet's nests, attacking enemy forces, trying to get them attack us. We will defend castles. We will attack horse archers. We will fight huge armies of Landians. You name it. Uh, we're going to start here by raiding. These fuck peasants resisted us and killed one of our fucking lake rat troops. Now we're going to be upgrading, but we're going to be doing this carefully. Why? Because I don't want to upgrade units out of javelin Javelinville, uh, so to speak. This Imperial trained infantry, those higher ranked uh, Imperials, unfortunately, don't have javelins. Uh, so some of these units we will upgrade. And of course, we're always going to pick the troop tree that has javelins or throwing axes. Of course, I'm going to be trying to get lots of Batanian recruits. One of my first intentions intentions with this is to go up to Batania and start recruiting a bunch of volunteers. Not because I want a bunch of peasants with a hammer, uh, although that would be fun in its own right, uh, but because we want skirmishers. We're going to have to recruit and build some skirmishers. So already, Western Empire forces uh, and look, it looks like Vlandian forces want a piece of our Javelin-only uh, series here. Uh, the Vlandians are pulling out wisely and these dipshit Western Empire folks get to be, uh, you know, they get to be the person that gets dunked on by Michael Jordan here in the first episode. You can see the power bar has them slightly favored, but that doesn't mean shit, right? We have uh, a handful of high-end companions, uh, but just even marginal tactics here oh, is going to completely dismantle uh, this force of 300 and something Western Empire. Uh, now, this is not my optimal battlefield, uh, but just for the first battle, it doesn't matter too much. I think I could I could kind of fumble through this episode and we can probably still win. Now, first thing I have to do here, a little bit of housekeeping. I want to assign some divisions here that makes some sense. I want lots of foot javelins in one division. That way, these guys can be moved around at the same speed, and I know where these units are going to be. The sixth is almost always my heavy skirmisher division. A lot of these guys will have two-handed weapons. And then what we'll do is the first division will be shield infield. Uh, shield infield. There's my baseball mind at work. Shield uh, javelin throwers that can square and things like that. Now, Zuvan will lead the 8th Corps, uh, but there's not that many cavalry in our army, right? Of course, we have no archers, and I'll get to that in a minute. So I'm just sort of distributing these companions here. Some of them are low level, some of them are medium or higher level. Uh, the bottom line you need to know, though, is that we're going to run six, maybe seven divisions in this series. Uh, it'll kind of develop as I uh, hone my strategy as I get better uh, sort of understanding how I want to play these episodes out. It's obviously going to be very different in that we have to attack the enemy up close. It's going to be very interesting and challenging fighting large armies full of archers, uh, yet that's what we're here for, right? I relish a challenge, uh, and this is going to definitely provide that. I'm just going to get rid of the, the second cavalry altogether. I don't have enough cavalry at this stage to have two divisions, 
Uh, the third at this stage is just going to be sort of a defensive javelin cav division. Now the fourth, look at this. I, I switched it to low troop preference because I have to level some of these really low level troops, right? I've got these wood, wood, what are they, wood, wood runners or whatever the fuck, battalion forces. And she has a banner that increases their troop movement speed. So the fourth and fifth will probably be what I consider sort of leveling divisions. Uh, both of their captains have good banners and good skills, but horrible throwing skills. Uh, so they'll just be learning. I know somebody out there is already saying, well, you should give them some perks to help their throwing. At this stage, I'm not too worried about upgrades. Anybody who's played, played Banner Lord a reasonable amount of time knows that upgrades come in uh, in huge quantities pretty quickly. Uh, probably by episode 6, 7, 8, we will have like 50% of the army tier 5. All right, so strategy here. I don't actually know what we're facing. I didn't uh, take a close look at the enemy forces here. I know they're going to have some cav, they'll have some archers, and they'll have some infantry. Usually, uh, most of your opponents will have more infantry than anything else. And so we're going to prepare essentially a circling formation here. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. Uh, the third will be used both to charge, distract, and also just to kind of knock the enemy around. I will be driving the eighth core around the whole time. It's interesting. I can't seem to change some of my unit quantities but none of that's going to matter. Okay, they do. They have 200 and something infantry, so they're going to have some archers, uh, but that's not too big of a deal. The, the battles that are going to be really hard will be the ones where the enemy has a lot of archers and plays defensive, right? We're going to have to be very aggressive. We're going to have to come in with turtles and squares and try to distract them with cavalry while we get our infantry up to their line. Now, I saw one cavalryman there in the 6th Corps. I'm going to have to get him out. I'll probably weed that out in between episodes. And I want to reiterate that point uh, as I just sort of soften some of these guys up. Uh, I'm not going to be playing this like a full campaign. None of my campaigns, with the exception of potentially an Asura I played through this fall or winter, uh, is going to be played step by step. Uh, just not... I, I don't think anybody's... Uh, or at least I don't think it's going to be worth your time and my time uh, to watch me stagger through 30, 40 hours of gameplay just to get the campaign going. Uh, maybe at some point or other we'll do more of that, especially if the demand is is quite noisy, uh, but not yet. Uh, so the sixth core is squaring just to sort of fend off Cav here. Uh, none of this is fully necessary, right? We're definitely going to overkill this. Let's go ahead and start flanking their infantry. It's coming right down the chute. So we're going to move the fourth and fifth back. Look at this stupid fuck. Oh, Leonidas is fucking telling us tonight we're going to dine in hell. I think the enemy is going to be dining in hell here. We're, we're going to be uh, dining in their, in their village after they're all destroyed. So I'm just kind of banging him around with the cab division here. I had to let Leonidas there say his piece. Uh, and all we're doing here is essentially kiting, right? We're surrounding the enemy. We're kiting him with the first division over here. The fourth and fifth are towards the back, of course, away from their archers. We'll get the first to their side here. And we're just going to pelt them with javelins, right? They're being hit by a heavy cav. Uh, guys are running them over. The 4th and 5th are too close, and that was a fumble fuck command. I did not want that to happen like that. Uh, that's just going to happen sometimes. You can see the enemy force here is very weak, right? There's a lot of guys with rags and fucking recruits and whatnot. It wouldn't matter, though. It's not like this force had any chance, even if it was a quality unit, right? We're just going to torch them with javelins. Uh, for those who don't know, I, I personally think that javelins are, like, one of the most powerful things in the game. Uh, of course... Uh, you know, you're probably watching some of my Archer Only and Kazate Only series where we're just devastating the land. Uh, and you might be persuaded to think, well, seems like, you know, whatever we, whatever units, you know, we're using, it's devastating. Of course, the AI is exploitable. Here I got a little sloppy. I think the 4th or 5th Corps was told to charge accidentally. Uh, that's not going to matter. We just roughed up their infantry. We can bring everybody in for the kill. Most of that division did get out, although it looks like we suffered about a dozen losses. Uh, but I'm just going to wrap this up at this stage. This this 100 infantry or whatever it is, is ready to die. I think their archers, it's going to be a formality when it's necessary to, to attack their archers. Uh, but I find javelins in Bannerlord extremely enticing. Right, You can one-shot guys, even units like the Wildling, which are not noble units. Right, These are just tier 5 units. Almost one-shot uh, units with the javelin. Right, They get a headshot. 
just like that guy there. Down they go. He got hit for 9-11. How appropriate. He's dialing 9-11 after that hit to the head. It's probably a painless death anyway. So I've got some Cav just kind of rampaging on their archers. But we'll pull them aside here just to sort of finish off some tactics on this episode. Uh, and I will sort of finish what I was saying here. I love Javelins in Bannerlord. Uh, I think they're incredibly underrated. I think Skirmishers in general are underrated. And I'm kind of hoping to change that. Just like the purpose of our, our channel is to educate people. Show people the, the incredible value of tactics. The incredible fun of tactics in Bannerlord. I think hopefully we can change some people's perspective on, on how Javelins and how Skirmishers play out in Bannerlord. We'll get these reserved divisions to the side here, but uh, we could also just F1, F3 this. Now, it's going to take me a little while to get my javelin sea legs, uh, despite that rainbow shot there. Uh, of course, playing the horse archer and archer only series a lot the last three weeks. In addition to my main campaign, uh, my javelin skills are a little bit off. Uh, my main campaign, I use javelins, but I haven't been playing as many episodes. Uh, and so the the javelins throwing skills here will take a little bit of time to dial in. Uh, and then very soon, we're going to be just Hercules, Hercules across the battlefield here, right? We've retained our fast hammer from the archer only and Kazate series just because it's fucking fun. Uh, and I don't need to devastate the fucking battlefield with my battle axe. Of course, we're going to hit some companions with javelins. That's practically a recipe for success, right, Argyle? We're going to try some fucking ridiculous thread the needle shots here, and we're going to see what we can handle with this uh, javelin only series. We will fight small armies and then progressively challenge more and more uh, audacious hosts as this series goes on. Of course, we'll try a variety of different challenges. We're not just going to fight in the woods like this where you can't see shit. Uh, we'll go down and terrorize some lands in Asurai. We'll fight in the desert. We'll go up and, and harass the sturgeon some. Eventually, we'll, we'll make our way over to the Kazate and Southern Empire area in that area. Maybe we'll raise Danustica to the ground. Uh, I digress. It's a beautiful city. Maybe we'll take it as a city over there while we're rampaging. Uh, and all along, you can count on tactics in this series. You can count on profanity. You can count on some semblance of uh, intelligent monologue here as I take you through this uh, this javelin-only series. Now, I want to caution you. Please don't uh, uh, ask me next week or two weeks from now when the next episode is. It might be three months from the date of this episode. Uh, until we get knee deep into the, into the, I don't know what to call it, into the, the skirmisher series or something like that. I'll come up with some kind of cool name. Uh, but whenever that is, you can expect weekly or more often content. Uh, and we're going to recruit all these guys here. These guys, even these guys that are kind of lower level, uh, at least until our army is flushed out, we'll take some javelins. Does the Triarii have arch, uh, or javelins? It doesn't. See, that's a shame. They should have javelins. Are you listening, Tail Worlds? Uh, we'll take some of these Imperial trained infantry. Anybody that has javelins is welcomed in our army. And of course, I'm not going to cry uncle if we have a couple archers by accident. But at, at, at any time that I see archers or cavalry slip into our army through upgrades, or, or maybe our companions recruit them or whatever, we will simply dump them onto the landscape. All right. Well, let me know what you think. Uh, we're going to definitely uh, dive into this series, but this is indeed just a teaser trailer. This is just to get the juices flowing. You guys out there, if you don't know a lot about javelins, if you don't, if you've never really played with, with skirmishers and you can't wait, I've got two different episodes that I can think of off the top of my head. One of them is literally called Rediscovering Your Lost Skirmishers, and it's a full like 40 minutes that covers javelin throwing motherfuckers. And then the other one I think you should watch is the, I think it's the first uh, volume of the underrated series that covers wildlings. Uh, it really covers and shows how devastating they can be on the battlefield. All right. Well, you want to subscribe, of course. If you want to see more, fellas, please comment and all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you next time.